guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, I am back with another tips and tricks video. Actually, a pretty extensive one. I was trying to think of tips and tricks, and I started with 10, and then I went to 15, and now I have, wait for it, 35 tips and tricks for cruising via Disney Cruise Line. Who is excited for this video? I know I am. For those of you who don't know, um, yeah, I've cruised Disney Cruise Line pretty extensively. I recently got back from the Fantasy and the Wish. These are my Disney Wish ears right here. Um, I have been on all five, five ships now. I have been on all five ships. I have cruised all over the place absolutely love Disney Cruise Line. And since my how to pack for a Disney cruise or any cruise video was so popular, I thought I would give you guys kind of my top tips and tricks. I just had no idea I was gonna come up with 35. I'm sure there's more. I mean, my mind just kept coming up with these ideas. So anyway, guys, we are gonna hop to it because like I said, 35, that's quite a bit. I'm gonna run through them th pretty quickly. So hopefully you guys have a notepad and a pen and you are ready to jot some notes. And like I said, Disney has five ships currently. A lot of these things are kind of universal for all the ships, right? Obviously the Disney Wish being newer has some specific tips and tricks to that ship in general. But as in all, this is, uh, yeah, tips and tricks for all of the entire Disney fleet. Are you guys ready? All right. Like I said, I don't know. Did I say it? In no particular order, here are 35 tips and tricks regarding Disney Cruise Line. Ready? Okay. First one, got to start out with it, guys. Passports. I 100% suggest, highly advise that everyone in your party gets a passport. Now, Disney cruises, not all of them, especially the US bound ones, do not really require passports. It is my personal suggestion. Obviously, some of the international ones do, so of course you have to double check. But the issue is, is if you go port side and something happens, the unthinkable happens, you are stuck in that country at that port, how are you gonna get home? That is like the biggest factor here when deciding if you want to get a passport. I will not cruise without one. So yes, number one tip, passport. Just do it. Get it for everyone, even the kiddos. All right, tip number two. Now this doesn't always happen, but it happens a lot, especially if you're already a Castaway Key member. So you already have a cruise booked, right? And you have a final payment date. Let's say your final payment date is in March, but for some people, you gotta double check. If you pay in full early, two weeks early, one month early, you can actually skip ahead and get your port excursions early. 100%, you want to do this. Don't wait till the paid in full date. Pay in advance if you can, if it pertains to you, your family, your cruise. Again, it's not everybody. But basically, the sooner you can get those port excursions, the adult-only dining, even, even some of the character fun and other things that you can kind of book in advance, early bird gets the worm 100% all the time. So the sooner you can do that, 100% do that. If that means you pay in full early, pay in full early. Hopefully this makes sense. Tip number three, again, about the port excursions. I get a lot of you guys asking me about port excursions. In general, you can book port excursions with Disney, right? Disney's Port Adventures, or you can book some sort of third party. I'm talking about the Disney ones right now. First thing to go first in any situation is gonna be an animal excursion. Any form of swimming with, swimming near, touching, dolphins, turtles, stingrays, anything involving an animal, those are gonna go first. In fact, you wanna read that fine print because some of those excursions, you're only watching dolphins swim. Some of them, you just get to pet the dolphin. Some of them, you get to feed the dolphin. Some of them, you're actually swimming with that dolphin. So you do wanna uh, read that fine print, especially which ages are allowed how long the excursions are, and if there's any uh, you know, special equipment 
or footwear that is required for those excursions, you definitely want to read that fine print. Also, the number one thing that goes are the cabanas over at Castaway Key. In fact, unless you're a super duper high Castaway Key member, I'm talking about platinum and gold and soon to be pearl, those go first. So by the time you get to silver and a newbie, yeah, those are usually gone. But just know cabanas, first thing to go. Anything with an animal, first thing to go, right? So definitely like tip number two, early bird does indeed get the worm. But here's some little, you know, little tips and tricks over here about port excursions. First, did you know you can actually kind of look at the potential port excursions on DisneyCruiseLine.com? That's right, above in DisneyCruiseLine.com, you can look at port adventures. You can actually select your port, Jamaica, Mexico, Castaway Key, whatever you wanna do, and it will give you a list of options. This way you can kind of shop ahead of time, jot notes, get an idea of what you wanna do, talk to the family about it, that way, when your moment comes, you can 100% get it quickly. Again, early bird gets that worm. And for those of you who are wondering, Castaway Key, there's even excursions for Castaway Key. Now, we have done a few of them. The most recently is we kayaked around the island. Uh, yeah, pretty strenuous, but a lot of fun. My, my uh, husband and son had a very good time um, on that excursion specifically. But just note, most people... They just chill at Castaway Key. They're beaching it, they're oceaning it, they're doing snorkel, they're eating, they're hanging out, sleeping on hammocks. That's right, a lot of that kind of chill vibe is happening at Castaway Key. But if you do wanna book an excursion, it is 100% an option. The 5K is still happening and you can rent bicycles. That's right, all in Castaway Key. But let's keep going because I've got 35 to talk about, guys. Number four, did you know that Disney Cruise Line's Magical Express is still happening? That's right, Disney World's Magical Express, uh, that got the ax. Disney Cruise Line's is 100% happening and I kind of advise it. I know it's more money, it can be a lot more money, but it kind of sets the tone for the trip. I absolutely love starting my cruise with Disney's Magical Express. You just start that Disney vibe, that Disney level of service, and sometimes, of course, they play the Disney movies on the screen. You're just kind of jump-starting your vacation with that experience. And note, you can add Magical Express to your uh, Disney Cruise package, especially if you're adding a pre or post hotel stay. And of course, I am talking about Orlando MCO Port Canaveral when I'm talking about the Magical Express. So we usually fly in a day early, we'll stay at the Hyatt, which is in the airport. Then we'll take the Magical Express over to Port Canaveral the very next morning, the first day of our cruise. So yes, know that it's an option if you've got a Port Canaveral cruise. Let's keep going. Next tip, oh, this is a big one, guys. Open house. As soon as you board the ship, you can look on your itinerary on the app, which we'll talk about. There's gonna be something called open house for the kids clubs, all the kids clubs, but especially if you've got those younger kiddos, those oceaneer kiddos, those ages three to 12 kiddos. Did you know that during open house, mom, dad, brother, sister, uncle, grandma, whoever can go in to the kids club and kind of hang out and show the youngins what the kids club is all about. You 100% wanna do this. You wanna introduce the kids clubs to all of the kids and the appropriate ages so that when the next day and parents aren't allowed, A, your kiddo isn't nervous, B, perhaps your kiddo is excited to do it, or C, they're just like gone. My kids are like, mom, see ya, I saw something on the edge and they're gone. But you wanna start that early at the open house. A, it's a good way for the parents to kind of see what the kids clubs are about, you know, get that comfort level going. And B, it's for the kiddos to see what the kids clubs are about so they can get that comfort level. And for those of you who are wondering, I have kids club videos on the Fantasy and the Disney Wish up on my channel. Uh, the ones on the Wish are very similar to what's on the other four ships, you know, Wonder, Magic, a dream. All those kids clubs are kind of the same. The ones on the wish are 
different because they're newer but yes those are up on my channel if you want to explore the kids clubs in advance but 100 percent do the open house next tip did you know there's two different times for dining set dining times eating in the rotational dining schedule there's two times you want to know which time you are and you want to book the time that's best for you so there's main seating which is the early seating it's what 5 45 ish this seating is great for families with young kiddos, for kiddos that are used to eating early, for kiddos that are going to crash early on in the evening. This is a great seating for you. Then there's second seating, which is about 8 o'clock. Those are great for adult only passengers, people with older kiddos, people who want to spend more time at the port and less time on the ship. They usually will enjoy second dining. But no, there's two options, main and second so when you book your cruise make sure you get the right one for you next tip oh yeah you want to make sure you pack accordingly now like i said i have a whole video on packing i think it's my top 20 tips and tricks for packing disney cruise line or any cruise in general but i think the biggest mistake people make and i do say this in the video is they don't include something for motion sickness a lot of first time cruisers, you're worried about motion sickness and I get it, but sometimes someone who's cruised for a while will unexpectedly get some motion sickness. So you just want to plan ahead specifically packing all your stuff. Think about motion sickness, get the pills, the patch, the bands, whatever you need, be prepared. So if it does happen to you, you're good to go. So yes, that's one of my tips. Next thing up, this is kind of a sad one if you have little kiddos, but it's something you need to know. There are lots of pools on the cruise, but you are not allowed to go in the pool with a swim diaper, which means any little kiddo who is not potty trained, you are not, I repeat not, allowed in the pools not even the kiddie pool disney is so beyond serious about this if they notice anyone with a swim diaper you're getting kicked out they're cleaning the pool which means everyone gets kicked out because they have to sanitize and re-clean the pool they have to do that every single time they see some little accident happening in the pool but on the plus side if you have a kiddo who is not potty trained who is in a swim diaper they get to go to the splash pad. And I am telling you those splash pads are pretty amazing, especially the one on the Wish. Absolutely loved that splash pad. But yes, know this in advance. If you have a non potty trained kiddo, this is gonna be an issue for you. Maybe you quickly potty train them. I don't know, but just a heads up, know about it. Next tip, we're on number nine, by the way, for those of you who are counting room service a lot of people don't realize this because you've got cabanas and you've got a free breakfast buffet and you've got lunches and rotational dining a lot of people don't realize you can also order room service that's right and most of the items are complimentary just don't forget to tip the person who brought your stuff but i am talking cookies mickey's premium ice cream bar um, i have a co-worker who absolutely orders the cheese platter every single day just don't forget about the luxury of room service it's definitely a good idea especially midday you know you pulled in the morning you just want something to nibble on it's not time for dinner good idea next thing are any form of disney show or event or theater production anything that disney has on the calendar the keyword here is early never arrive on the time always early the spots and the everything get filled up so quickly any of the people who have cruised before we know this we know what time to show up we know the best spots to see each particular show or event so don't make the mistake and just pop in there you want to be early in fact i'll give you a little tip my favorite spot to see the sail away party, which is the very first party that happens the moment the cruise is the ship is ready to actually physically move. This all happens during the sail away party. I like to watch it from upper deck. 
bottom deck, it can be hard to see past all the people plus the people that are dancing and the kiddos going crazy. I like to watch the sail away party from the second deck. It's not really deck two, but it's the upper deck. You'll see it when you get on the ship, but yes, that is where Nina likes to watch the sail away party. Next tip, consider skipping port and just hanging out on the ship. That's right, if you have a seven day cruise and you're going to Jamaica and Mexico and blah, 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 and maybe there's something you're not that interested or maybe you're going to NASA and you've been to NASA 200 times like some people, consider not actually getting off the ship. Consider staying on board. I promise you, it can be fun. Oftentimes the pools have no one in them. The water slide or water coaster, depending on the cruise you're going on, literally has zero to limited weights and they still serve food. So yeah, consider while everyone else can't wait to get off the ship and go to port and do some excursion, just note that you can actually stay on board and possibly have an awesome, chill day. We love to do this. Actually, we'll stay on board. This is the best time to play in the pool. And then we'll go to the food kiosk areas and get pizzas and burgers and just kind of chill and, and just have a great time. So yeah, consider skipping port day and just staying aboard the ship. Next thought, don't forget to tip your servers, your room steward, any of those people. In fact, there's four people that you should be tipping. Three of them are at dining. You got your head server, your main server, and I forget their names, but there's three people. One that takes your order, one that manages everything, one that does your drinks, uh, and your room steward. The person who's actually making your bed and turning down your bed and, you know, cleaning your toilets and replacing all your shampoo and conditioner and lotion and all that good stuff. Disney's automatically going to make you tip them, but you can prepay. It's called prepay gratuities. Add it to your package, prepay it, or Disney's going to automatically add it to your room charges. But note, they're getting very minimal money. Many people, Nina included, actually tip them extra. So I forget what it is right now. Is it like $13.50 per person per day that you have to pay? I tip extra. I actually bring extra 20s, even 50s, and I will tip them to these people at the end of the cruise. So just note that tipping is definitely something that you want to do, right? And consider tipping extra than what Disney suggests is basically what I'm saying. Make sense? I, I hope it does. Next thing, yeah. Get creative, dress up, enjoy the cruise. Any form of pirate night, or if you're on a themed cruise, a Pixar cruise, or a Marvel cruise, dress up, enjoy the, enjoy the situation. Maybe you're on a holiday cruise. Dress up, matching shirts, cute PJs, because you're walking about the ship. You can absolutely go to the lobby or the atrium late at night with matching PJs and get a picture in front of the Christmas tree or the staircase or whatever the situation is. So yeah, join the fun, dress the part and just, you know, have a good time, be creative, dress up, you know, prepare in advance for those things. Next thing up is a lot of people don't realize this, but there's characters everywhere. Literally everywhere you walk, Mickey's meeting someone, some obscure characters meeting someone, Stitch is walking down the hallway, characters are everywhere. And even though you can see the time and place for the characters on the app, sometimes they're just kind of walking around. So you always want to be prepared so you can, you know, take a picture and perhaps even get a signature. I have a very favorite photo of mine. Uh, we were indoors in line to see Vampirina and it was a Christmas cruise and all of a sudden through this giant porthole, you'll see it in the picture, Goofy in like his Santa outfit is walking by. My kids notice they run to the porthole and I just happened to take a picture of Goofy looking through the porthole and both of my kids looking at Goofy, you know, in awe absolutely love this picture to the point where I have it blown up and framed in my house. So just note, characters are everywhere. Yes, you can stand in line and wait for them and you should do that, but sometimes they just walk around. I mean, it's part of the magic of being on a Disney crew. So just always be ready because you never know who's walking about and sometimes they're behind you. I've actually had Stitch walk behind me before. I had no clue. All of a sudden I have this like claw tapping me on the shoulder. I look, it's Stitch, I freaked out, good times. 
but yes, they're everywhere. Also note, if you're a princess person, you are specifically wanting to see the princesses, Belle, Ariel, Aurora, I forget who else. Um, you can actually sign up to meet uh, for the Princess Royal Gathering on the app as well. And this is gonna be a scheduled time for you to meet, what is it, like four to five princesses at one time. So absolutely don't forget to do that when it's your time to you know, schedule all of your fun. Next tip, so I keep mentioning it, but it is a tip of mine. You 100% want to use the app. You want to download the Disney Cruise Line app. You want to get to know it. You want to enter in your reservation. You want to explore it because as soon as it gets activated, when you're on board, it's going to show you everything. They are no longer giving about paper daily navigator slips. Everything is on the app. You want to know what's happening in the kids club? It's on the app. You want to know what dining is happening? It's on the app. You want to know what characters to see or what family activities are happening or what movie they're playing on the pool deck, it's all in the app. You want to know what time the, sh the store opens, what time anything in the app. Love the app, know the app, get the app. It's really kind of all about the app. And the same thing, of course, on the app, there is a section called know before you go. These are kind of tips and tricks and, you know, maybe COVID or medical policies that Disney has in place. You just want to double check and make sure you have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted, all those good things. Make sure you know what's going on. That's going to be in the know before you go section again on the app. Next thing up. Now, I find this one really important to my family, but I don't think a lot of people realize this. You want to 100% in your suitcase pack shelf stabled, pre-packaged, you purchased it type of items in your suitcase. Why? I mean, why, do you, why would you do this, Nina? I'm getting free food on the ship. Why am I packing snacks? There are many ports, uh, Mexico specifically, because we just did it. They do not want you taking anything off the ship that has been made by a chef or made by you on the ship or is like fresh fruit or meat or nuts or whatever. They will only allow you to bring something that is pre-packaged, manufactured packaged, something you bought at the store packaged. That's the only thing they're gonna make you take off the ship. So of course, my husband, not thinking, makes my son a sandwich, puts it in a Ziploc baggie. Yep, that had to be chucked. He tried to bring a banana because, you know, he's like, well, it's a banana. I'm going to bring it, eat it later. Nope, it got chucked. My daughter had a handful of nuts that she put in a Ziploc baggie, chucked, all thrown away. The only thing that didn't get thrown away were my granola bars that I pre-packed that I had for everyone. Uh, Cause you know, some of these excursions are three hours, five hours long. And unless your excursion includes food, you might want to have something to snack on. Same thing, I do think we had to dump all the water in our water bottles, but if we had actual bottles of water with us, those were safe. So yes, just know this in advance. Some of those ports are not going to let you bring anything off the ship unless it's pre-packaged, purchased from a grocery store. Not you made it and you stuck it in a Ziploc baggie. That doesn't count. So yes, that's my tip. Make sure you just pack up those granola bars and whatever you think you might need for port days. Next tip, when you do go off the ship, whether it's for a port excursion or a port adventure or whatever, and you actually got off the ship, 100%, I cannot un, you know, underestimate this enough, get back on the ship on time. Early is even better. So if the all aboard is 4.30, do not think you can be running on the pier at 4.35 and the ship is going to wait for you. There is a thing called pier runners. You can actually Google it and you can actually see videos of people hustling and running on the pier trying to get on their ship on their various cruise line and the cruise is just taking off. The ship is not going to wait for you. So if all aboard, which the captain says 50,000 times throughout the day, there's no reason why you wouldn't know. If the all aboard is 430, 
plan on four or 3.30. Just don't be that person who's running late because you had to get a last minute shopping thing or you drank a little too much at the, <laughs> at the Nassau port or whatever it is. The ship won't wait for you. So whatever the all aboard is, make sure you get there and you're on your ship in time. Big tip guys, but fortunately a lot of people don't realize that. So yes, yeah, ship's not gonna wait for you. Next one, do not underestimate the power of the sun. And I know this seems stupid, but the sun in Florida or the sun at your home state is just so different from the sun in the Bahamas, for this, from the sun in the Caribbean, from the sun on Castaway Key. I cannot tell you how many times I have gotten burnt to a crisp on Castaway Key and I had a hat and I had sunscreen and I was in the shade and I wasn't, you know, whatever. I was doing the best I could, I still got burnt. Do not underestimate, underestimate the power of the sun even on a cloudy day, even when it's overcast, even when it's not high peak summer. So absolutely, sunscreen, water, cover-ups. I have seen so many people get taken away due to heat stroke and carried back on the ship in a wheelchair or something else. So yes, it happens, prepare for it. And as my coworkers love to tease me about, this tip is from them, reapply. Do not sunscreen once and think you're good to go. Reapply, 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 reapply. Nina is horrible at this, probably, which is why I end up looking like a lobster when I'm done. But yes, don't underestimate the sun. Be prepared even on overcast days. Next tip. Now, when you're getting ready to book a Disney cruise, you definitely want to book early. I book our cruises the second I can. So as soon as Disney says, blah, 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 cruises coming out for next year, this is the date you can book, that's me. I'm booking on that date. In fact, I have a list of clients that I book on that date because they all know early bird gets the worm. Not only are you gonna get the best stateroom or the ideal stateroom for you, you're gonna get the best price. The price only goes up as that cruise is available for purchase. Does this make sense? As more people book a category or book the cruise, the price only goes up. So you wanna be the first person to book so that you can get the best of whatever you need. In fact, I 100% suggest you book with a travel agent. If not me, someone else. You wanna book with a Disney Cruise Line expert, not just any travel agent, a travel agent who's actually been on a Disney cruise or multiple cruises. Like I said, I've done two just this year. You want to book with someone who knows what they're doing, who can answer your questions. Hopefully this helps because I know a lot of my people who book with me, they don't just want me to book. They want to know, well, which stateroom do you suggest for my family or where on the ship? Do I want midship, aft, forward? Which deck should I stay on? Deck five, deck eight, deck 10? Which, what's the difference? What are the perks and minuses for booking an inside stateroom versus a veranda? All those things, a travel agent who knows what they're doing can help you with those questions, but yes book early and hopefully book with someone who knows what's going on. Next tip. So you've booked, you're on your cruise, you're having a good time and you're loving it. Make sure you book your next cruise while on your cruise. That's right. You want to book what's called a placeholder. I think it's $250 down. I, I can't remember that you can automatically charge it to your account on the app and you book a placeholder. You don't have to pick a day. You don't have to know when you're going. You book a placeholder, which often gives you a discount, yes, for the next cruise that you pick. So you book your placeholder, you pay your $250 or whatever they charge you. And then when you get back home and you're ready to look at dates and figure it out, you can call your travel agent, you can go online, you can call Disney, whatever you wanna do. Then you can pick a date and apply your placeholder to that date and hopefully get the discount. Discount doesn't apply to all things, but most things you can use that discount for. Make sure if you already have a travel agent that you click you wanna use your current travel agent when booking that placeholder because it's just gonna make everything easier for you 
and for them. So yes, placeholder, it's an option on the app. There's usually signs up, do it. Next tip, this is a big one. I couldn't believe how many people didn't know this, but if you have seen any of my Disney embarkation videos, you will notice I 100% pack a case of bottled water to go on the ship with me. I carry it in my carry-on. I will actually order from Amazon, have Amazon deliver my water to my hotel. I actually take the case of water and I can stick it in my actual suitcase, in my actual carry-on, or I can take one of my Disney Cruise Line, um, you know, boarding slips and put it on the water and they will 100% put the water in my room for me just like they would a suitcase. So yes, you can absolutely 100% pack water. Why would you do this? Well, for someone like me, unfortunately, the water on the ship, although delicious, it's not like Florida water, it's really good water, it makes me bloat. It kind of affects my edema. So by the time the cruise has ended, I've kind of gotten some water retention, which can be uncomfortable. So I 100% pack spring water, which works best for me, and drink it throughout the cruise. Yes, I will drink, you know, the fountain water a little bit. You know, for the most part, when I'm going um, off to port or I'm sitting in my room, I drink my bottle of water. Note, you can also pack six beers. Each adult can bring six beers. So if you want to drink a little bit but not pay the high cost, you can bring six beers or two bottles of wine per adult. So hopefully this makes sense. But like I said, I will order from Amazon. Usually we stay at the Hyatt if it's a Port Canaveral cruise. Amazon will 100% deliver to the Hyatt at the MCO airport. So like I said, in my embarkation video, my most recent one, they delivered us 12 pack of beer, right? So six for me, six for the husband. They, they delivered a case of water and a bunch of snacks that we then just took directly onto the ship the next morning. So yes, know that you can do that. Next tip, the water slide. Okay, one of the most popular things on any Disney cruise is the water slide. Note, the best time to ride the water slide is right before dinner or in the late evening or of course on port days when everyone's at port you could be riding that water slide so as most families with kiddos do early dining remember i talked about it 5 45 starting at about 4 45 as those families leave the pool take showers get dressed for dinner yeah that's an awesome time to ride the water slide because all those kiddos are getting ready for dinner which means less people in line for you next tip I talked about them a little bit, but you 100% want to do all the things. And I mean all the events, all the special shows, everything that happens in the Walt Disney World Theater, do it. Just do it. They are pretty amazing things and 100% part of the cruise. Yes, sometimes we've seen a show that wasn't the most awesome, but in general, we've always had a good time. Pirate Night. Uh, for those of you doing themed cruises, your Marvel show or your Pixar show, do it. Sail away party, do it. The three shows you're going to see in the Walt Disney World Theater, 100% watch those. Plus the other nights, they might bring in a mu musician or a different type of entertainment. Or we once we had a comic or, you know, a different type of musical band came in one time. Don't miss out, 100% go to those events as best you can, and they sell popcorn. So you can purchase popcorn and drinks as well to enjoy yourself. All right, guys, I can't believe it. We're on tip 25 already, 10 more to go. Here we go. My next tip is to do the daily activities. So I know a lot of people are just pool, pool, pool. I'm going to the pool, I'm gonna hang out in the pool, I'm gonna get some sun, I'm going on the water slide. But did you know there's actually family activities aboard the ship? Yes, find them on your app. You can do trivia with your family. You can do crafts with your family. You can do bingo with your family. Oh my goodness. This is my fa family's favorite things to do on the ship. So if you want to win a Disney Cruise Line scrunchie, you might consider doing some of the family trivia events. Not everything is about the pool. 
I'm just saying make sure you look on the app and try out the other activities as well. Next tip. Now, some of you may not realize this, but when you go to book your Disney cruise or you're on your app, if you keep scrolling, there's actually something there for you to schedule a character phone call. You want to 100% do this. Even if you're just adult, I do it every single cruise. In fact, my coworkers think I'm funny because my phone will ring and it's Mickey Mouse. So you want to set up the character call again, even if you're just adults, especially if you're kiddos, you actually set up the call and you can pick which character you want to call Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, whoever it is. And then you can select a time. Should Mickey call you at 8 a.m., 8.30, 9 o'clock, whatever. And then they call you the morning of your cruise and they tell you how excited they are to meet and greet you aboard whatever ship and whatever destination you're going to. Now, I tried to, of course, film this last time I did it and it had a blocker on it. It wouldn't let me copy uh, the phone call because otherwise I would play it for you guys, but it's 100% adorable and again it sets the tone for your cruise right it just jump starts the magic even when you're showering and eating breakfast and getting ready for the day so 100 percent set up that character phone call it's free next tip i mentioned it a little bit but you want to prepay everything you can if you don't your cruise tab at the end of your cruise can be quite expensive so i like to prepay my gratuities prepay absolutely everything i can think of you know transportation prepay the hotel the night before whatever i add it all to my cruise booking have it paid in advance so hopefully my t my tab at the end of the cruise isn't too obnoxious but any sort of you know adult beverage that you buy souvenir that you buy anything that you kind of add to your cruise tab it grows and it grows. In fact, port adventures get added to that as well. So anything you can kind of pay and get out of the way is usually best for the credit card, right? All right, next tip is regarding dining. So this is quite common. So you go to your dining, right? Your rotational dining, your dinner dining, and you go there and you're looking at the menu and you're like, I don't know if I want the chicken or the steak or the salad and I just, I can't decide. How many of you guys do that? Did you know you can just order them all? Yeah. Yeah, I can't decide between the raviolis and the whatever. Can I just get them both? You absolutely can. It's included. It doesn't cost any extra. In fact, you can do this with dessert as well. Live it up. You're on a cruise. Get the ice cream and the brownie and the creme brulee and the piece of cake and the cheese, whatever. Get it all and share it with everyone at your table. You absolutely can order all the items and test them all out. Don't assume you can only get one appetizer and one entree and one dessert. If you're having a hard time picking or you think many things look good, get them all, take a couple of bites, move on. But yes, you absolutely can do that. Next tip, did you know you can decorate your room? The door especially is magnetic so i will go around and i will you know print out fun little images you know pictures of mickey words whatever i want to do my kids names print them out you can laminate them then you can tape magnets on the back and put them on your stateroom door because it's magnetic absolutely love walking down the hallways to all the different staterooms and seeing all the cool decorations that people put on their door. Of course, you don't want to put anything too special or too expensive because unfortunately there are people about that might take your things. It's not super common, but you know, some silly teenager somewhere may think it's fun to take your magnet. So just be careful what you put up there, but absolutely you can decorate your stateroom with um, anything that's magnetic. Don't use tape, no tape, but anything that's magnetic, yes, you can absolutely do that next tip kind of goes along with it a little bit did you know that most cruises if not all cruises have a special facebook cruise page dedicated to just your cruise that's right you can go on facebook type in fantasy february 12th cruise 2023 
and, a, and a, a cruise page should pop up. You can actually join that cruise page and meet new people who are gonna be on your actual cruise. You can actually get your kids together in advance so that when they go to the kids club, they already have a friend. You can actually join special groups on that page for people that wanna do gift exchanges, fish extender gift exchanges, magnet exchanges, recipe ex exchanges, um, ornament exchanges if it's Christmas. All sorts of forms of exchanges happen on those pages. Basically, it's you buying a little gift, someone else buying a little gift, and you kind of exchange them as a way to kind of get some you know, special gifts and treats on your cruise. So yes, if that is something that interests you, don't forget to join your Facebook cruise page. I do have a warning, however. I have been on several of these pages for several years. And unfortunately, there's always a group of people on those pages that just have the wrong information. <laughs> They will tell you all about something you should do that's just totally incorrect. So just make sure you, you, know, you book with a travel agent and you double check some of these things with either Disney or your travel agent because yes, unfortunately some information gets misled on those pages. But in general, it's all in good fun, right? Next tip, and I do this personally, if you go on the app, once you've, you know, you've entered your cruise, your cruise is almost happening, you keep scrolling, there are onboard gifts that you can pre-purchase to have on your cruise, right? So you can have your room decorated, happy birthday, happy anniversary. You can pre-order champagne and beer and water and cake and cheese platters and little gifts and all these things are on the onboard gifts. I'm gonna tell you what my favorite thing is. My favorite is the cruise blankets. I have too many of these. I'm gonna go with I have about six. I have one per ship, I have a holiday one. This is a Star Wars at sea blanket. They are my favorite blankets, not kidding. Absolutely love these. They're so fluffy and fuzzy wuzzy with like this fake Sherpa on the one side and they're just, oh, they're just, I just love them. So if you're looking for a special souvenir, I suggest you do the pre uh, the pre boarding the you know onboard gifts. Once you're on the ship, you can't buy these. These are special things you have to purchase ahead of time. So look on the app and find one that suits you. Next tip: This is about boarding time. 100% right now, post COVID situation, you need a boarding time. You actually, when it's time per your date and your situation. When it's time for you to pick a boarding time, you need to go on the app and you need to select, I wanna board at 11, I wanna board at one, I wanna board at two. That's the time you're gonna physically show up and board your ship. Disney doesn't want you hanging around for hours, so do not show up early. Actually pick a boarding time that works for you and works with your you know, transportation options and needs. Does this make sense? If you are doing the Magical Express, right, that we talked about early for Port Canaveral, prepay Disney's Magical Express, you don't need a boarding time because they will tell you when they're picking you up and when they're taking you to the ship. But everyone else, everyone doing private drivers or you're parking yourself, your Uber, your cab, whatever, you are gonna need a specific boarding time and that's what time you're gonna actually get to the port to board your ship. Now here's a few things that you should probably know when picking your boarding time. First, rooms are usually ready in the 2, 2.30 time zone, right? So if you're bringing a bunch of people and you have a bunch of carry-on luggage that you're dragging with you throughout the ship, just note that if your room's not gonna open till 2, 2.30, but you board at 11, you're gonna be taking all of your bags with you. So just something to consider. For those of you who have little kids and you're like, I just need to go to the pool, I just need to get my kids in the pool, that is great. We just need to eat lunch, it's early, I need to get lunch, that's us. Uh, we always board at 11 because my kids are starving. I'm like, we need to get on that ship so I can feed these kiddos. For us, we board early, again, 11 o'clock. Boarding early means you can go to the pool early. Usually there's less people because everyone else is waiting to get into their stateroom. You can actually start playing at the pool um, instantly or you can go straight to cabanas or whatever you have um, on your ship and start eating. So you can board later if you don't wanna be carrying all your bags around the ship with you all day 
or you can board early if you're interested in pooling early eating early for which case you can just leave your luggage you know near your pool chair and, and you know hopefully everything's okay but note if your goal is to pool early that means you can go on the ship already in your swimsuit and care and cover up have your swim trunks on as soon as you enter the ship grab a pool chair and just hop right in absolutely allowed so it's getting a little long i got a few more tips tip number 33 we're so close guys if you're also going to Disney World, if you're doing a land and sea adventure, by the way, that doesn't exist, you cannot book land and sea together in one package. But if you are doing a Disney cruise and Disney World, same trip back to back, suggestion, do Disney World first. Why? Because Disney World's going to wear you out. So then you can relax on the cruise. If you do cruise first and then world, your sea legs might not enjoy that. Sea legs, yes, that's the thing. When you get off the ship, you may still feel like you're rocking a little bit. Not so much fun to then go be riding a bunch of roller coasters. So that's just my tip. Do Disney World first. Tip number 34, pack your medicine. All your medicine. I do understand that you can buy certain things on the cruise, right? They will be beyond overpriced, of course, but they don't have everything that you might need. I, there was this woman on the wish and I forget what she was looking for. She got a bite or something. There was nothing in the gift shop that could help her. She was in pain for like three days because that's how long the cruise was. I felt awful for her because she didn't pack it. So pack everything you can think of. I have a medical kit that we always bring. I have a whole video on it. But don't think just COVID, guys. Yes, pack a COVID test if you're worried so you can test yourself and your family. But I'm talking all sickness, fever, headache, tummy issues, bug bites, any form of boo-boo, heartburn, hangover, sunburn, aloe, everything you can think of, make sure you pack it so you have it. It'll save you some money and some frustration So should those items not actually be on the ship or at port. Last tip, guys, and this is kind of a big one, although it seems very generic, and that is to have fun. Don't stress. You did all the stressing with the planning and the figuring everything out and the organization, but once you're on board, that's all over. It's over. It's done. Just enjoy yourself. Take a moment. Sit on your balcony. Enjoy the sunshine. Drink a fun beverage. Eat a fun treat. You're on a Disney ship in the middle of the ocean. Enjoy it. Enjoy the sunrise. Enjoy the sun sets. Try not to over plan and try not to over schedule. If you don't get to see every single character that was an option, it's okay. Because hopefully you booked a placeholder and you get to do it again next time. So that's really just a really big tip, guys. Once you've done all the things, you've done the best you can, it is what it is, enjoy yourself the best you can. So yeah, those are my top tips, guys. 35 unbelievable tips. I'm sorry the video was so long, but I just didn't know which tips to cut out. So we're gonna close this out quickly because the video's already too long, but yes, hopefully you guys enjoyed the tips. Hopefully they helped you out. Make sure you check my packing video for Disney Cruise Line as well. Make sure you check out my actual Disney Cruise vlog videos where I show you the ships, I show you the stateroom options, I show you the kids clubs and the other clubs, and I show you just what it's like to go on a cruise or be on a cruise or Castaway Key, I've got all those videos. So make sure you check them out, guys. But yes, I hopefully this helped you guys out. Hopefully you got some good information and you took notes. If you haven't already, guys, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray or white. They keep changing it. Like this video and comment. Was this helpful? Would you like more tips and tricks like this for other situations, for Disney World, Universal, whatever? Put it in the comments. If you've cruised before, Disney Cruise Line, and you have a tip that I didn't mention, even though I did 35 of them, put that in the comments as well. But as always, guys, mahalo for watching. Nina out. Bye, guys.